people who slandered me or gossiped about all kinds you know, of negative things about me and my teaching, or the countries that also, you know, oppressed me and obstructed my teaching of some kind. I have never done anything wrong to them. Not that I remember at all in this lifetime. Never, ever, not even one bad word about them. So you see, you don't even have to offend people in order for them to be negative toward you. I even help wherever I can, whenever I can, to all these countries, only helping, blessing, and praying for them. I have never, ever done anything like abusing anybody's kindness or taking money from any one of them, any at all. I don't even know them personally. So if you want to be a master, uh, think again, huh? Whether you can be a master or not, that's another question. Yeah? Okay? I told you everything already. Well, enough for you to understand. It's not a joke, it's not a diploma that you could even bribe the professors or the dean to get that uh, diploma. Buddhas, the whole universe, know that Buddha. And they come often, anytime appropriate, to pay homage even to that living Buddha, like when Sikamani Buddha was alive. They always came and pay homage. The same with the present master. If there's any present master on earth, Buddhas and all the saints and say his heavens, divas and even ex-demons, kings, always come to pay respect to them. If you can see all that, if you can receive all that, and if all the Buddhas tell you that you are Buddha and pay respect to you, then you are Buddha. Otherwise, please, just be at peace. Thank God that you have a good method of enlightenment to practice. Thank God that you have a master's teaching to tell you to do good, to help others, help your nine generations and yourself. That's good enough already. So you see, please don't dream to be a master. I beg you, no. It's not easy. It's not the way it looks. You don't see behind the scenes how I have to cry, how I had to suffer. Being a master, not to talk about Maitreya Buddha as a master or higher master. Being an appointed master, you have to practice many, many, many years forever time to go through a different uh, training in hardship to be able to withstand these words, attacks, and, you know, uh, bad uh, energies and the control of the Maya energy as well. And all kinds of disasters will come into your personal life. Oh, you could die also brutally any time. Thus you accumulate, you know, being worthy to be given tremendous power to help others and also to balance your own life or else you can last long if you're not prepared. If you have not learned well from this world, you won't last long. And now, even being a master already appointed and given power, you still need to know that suffering is at every step you walk. And also you need to uh, go to many different uh, dimensions, many different uh, planets, many different stars, moons, suns and worlds in order to rescue the souls that's been lost and are uh, imprisoned there by their karma and hell, of course, as well. And also you need to be able to have the power and use it to go to different worlds, different dimensions, different levels for negotiation and sacrifice as well. So I understand that it looks easy from the outside for any master, but it's not, it's not. Just take care of yourself, practice well so that you will go to a higher level. And your chance of becoming a master, you never know. Maybe soon, maybe next life, if you are really a master, you will know it. Don't claim it just for fame and, and profit. It's too low to, 
to, to below your dignity. Don't do that to yourself, okay? Because all heavens and all worlds know it, and they're all laughing. And the punishment is immense. Once you leave the physical protection of the body, oh, you wish you were never born even from all the suffering that you will get. Please don't dream to be a master because you're not, especially because you're not. If you really want to join the, the monks and nuns and go out and give initiation to help other people be liberated, if truly that is your intention, unconditionally, then you can tell me, then I see if you can. And you can go out and do that, or go with the monks and nuns and help them in some way and learn with them. And later, when you can, and if your level is higher, then I can say, okay. Normally, they all have to report to me first all the names, except for one or two times in the Vietnamese refugee camp. It was very difficult to go inside there. So we relaxed the rules a little bit. It's not because we are controlling or anything. We just want people to really understand how precious the method is and how they have to really treasure and practice it to know the truth, because if they don't practice, then they don't know anything. They cannot improve, they cannot go higher up, they cannot get higher enlightenment. Then they will turn around and say, oh, that is nothing for me. It's not a good method or anything. You will not receive any blessing or anything or any experience or vision inside. Then you will think it's nothing, because you don't practice. The first time during the initiation, you have experiences. And that's how you believe in the practice, in the method, the quanning method. But if you don't continue to practice, when you go home and if you see other people, see visions and then all that, and you see me getting more disciples and the way I go out, talk to people, always smiling and giving candy, blessed food and all that, you think, oh, it's so easy. I can do that. No, 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 no. You must have tremendous power to lift people up, even from hell, to save their souls. Even you have to go to hell for them to save their souls. You have to suffer for them to save their souls. Because some souls are so wired in a quagmire of illusion and wrong concepts and the terrible burden of karma, of killing, of abortion, of all kinds of things that you cannot imagine people have if you see them from the outside. Even some monks, not to talk about normal people, they look just normal. They talk sweet and honey. They don't show you their true self until somehow the karma makes them exposed. And then you still can't believe it. You say, no, not this one, no. He talks so nicely and he knows sutras, he talks about Buddhist teachings. He cannot be that bad. No, you can never know. The thing is, you can never know. So you just have to pray. Take care that you are good and pure. You never know who is who. You never know. There was a Buddha. His name was Chikong Buddha. He carried a, a kind of a, a gurk uh, that people used to drink wine in the ancient times and he kept drinking on it. Maybe it's real wine inside, but he never really drink. So people <laughs> scolded him and all kinds of things. He never drink, he never ate animal people meat, even though it looked like that. He didn't eat real animal people meat. Nowadays, you can eat like a leg of vegan chicken. It looks like a leg of chicken person. You can eat the whole vegan chicken, which looks like the whole chicken person, but it's not. Maybe in those times, they also make similar things. Therefore, they say the Buddha even eats pig people's feet. He never did. No. He even say whoever eats animal people meat is not his disciple. You all know that. But nowadays, people just don't care about that. In the beginning, Buddha allowed it because some people just came in and didn't know anything. So the Buddha said, if you have to eat animal people meat, then you eat this kind of... Less karma meat, no karma meat, like already dead on the street or die natural death. Or somebody kill them, but not for you personally. And you don't hear the cry of the animal people when they're killed. But this was just in the beginning. The Buddha tried to ease them. 
into the real teaching. Because when the Buddha just came out, he didn't have that many disciples. Some believe in him, following him into where he lived, but they didn't have any food. So uh, they go out and eat animal people meat and go back to visit him, for example. The Buddha didn't even have an ashram until later on when real faithful followers wanted to even buy a piece of land with gold that was placed on the ground of that land as if bricks. So that is the prize that the prince who owned that land wanted to have. That's what he said. He said, if you lay all gold blocks, just like now we have gold blocks, if you lay all my gardens ground with gold blocks, like bricks, then I will sell it to you. That's the price. So the rich man wanted to buy at that price. He wanted to bring many carts of gold and lay them on the ground of that garden where it was supposed to be very convenient for the Buddha and some monks to stay because it was near the city, but not near. Easy for them to go for arms, you know, for food and easy for people to come at that time. <laughs> 